the 19th dynasty. The ethnic coincidence that the Hyksos were like the Israelites, Asiatic shepherds. The reference of the Israelites having settled at Goshen in the Ramesses region, which is the only mention of a Pharaonic name in the Old Testament. The 400 years still issued by Ramesses II, which provided a link with Avarice, the Hyksos capital. The biblical statement that the, that the sojourn in Egypt would last 430 years. These facts fit together so neatly in many respects that they have had an irresistible appeal for the majority of scholars. So even all the scholars knew that they were hiding the Israelites under the name Hyksos. Let's go into the book of Josephus now. Because this is the reason that we, this is how we know that Egypt was ruling, that the Israelites were ruling in Egypt. Hold that and get Exodus the first chapter. Get Exodus 1. And the, the, the brothers that are in Egyptology, we know that they're going to close their ear to this. But brothers and sisters, just open yourself up because it's not saying that you weren't the rulers of Egypt. You were. But you're not Egyptians. You're Israelites. So this is not taking away your dominion. You're taking away your future domin dominion by trying to hold on to an empire that the Most High already destroyed. Get Exodus, the first chapter. Yeah, we were the great kings in Egypt, but we fell. And we became slaves to Ramesses II. You got Exodus 1? Mm -hmm. Start at the first verse. Exodus 1 and 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. So it was 70 souls that walked into Egypt. And they, they came out, of, we came out a great nation. Read. For Joseph was in, was in Egypt already, and Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruit, fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and were exceeding mightily, and the land was filled with them. So the land of Egypt started being populated by the children of Israel. We were having children like nothing there. So the Egyptians had to do what, what they do in the day, population control. Read. Verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Ramesses II. This guy didn't have no respect for what Joseph did. See that? Read. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Listen, they're grown up mightier than us. So what must we do? Read. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let, let they multiply, and it, came to, and it come to pass that when they fell, fell it, fall it. When there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. So do what? And so get them up out of the land. So we will rule in the land of Egypt for them to say, get them out of the land. So they moved us all into the, into the, uh, the Goshen area. Originally, we were up with Ramesses first. Y'all see that? We were the governors all amongst that area. Until they, until Ramesses II moved us out of the land. Read that part again. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and come, and it come to pass that when there fall out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasures, cities, put them and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. So who built Pithens and Ramesses for the Egyptians? The Israelites. That's common sense. That now, now I understand why there's no history of any new uh, pyramids being erected. Because the Egyptians didn't do that. The Israelites which were under the Egyptian rules, did that and built the, built the great pyramids. Because once Israel left, 
No new pyramids erected. Common sense. And let's go back into. Let's go. In, let's. I have one other thing to get, because we all know that Moses became a great king or a great prince among Egypt. All right. Let's go to Acts the seventh chapter, and then we're going into the book of the Josephus. And I want you to hold that so we can go back to Genesis 46 along with the Josephus, okay? You got it? Read Acts 7. And please read the, um, the 22nd verse. Read that. Acts 7 and 22. And Moses was learnt in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. It says, and Moses was learnt in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Read. And was mighty in the words and deeds. See that? He was mighty in the words and deeds. So Moses was walking and acting like a what? Egyptian. He was dressing like a what? An Egyptian. All right? So Israelites, during the whole Hyksos period, if you, wanna, if you want to, you can go type in Hyksos period, and you can see all the great technology in Egypt really came during that period that we were there. All the great history, the plumbing systems, how to build certain things, all came during the time that the Israelites were ruling in Egypt. Now, let's get uh, the book of Josephus. All right? We're in the, we're in the part Flavius, Josephus against Apion. Okay? Flavius Josephus against Apion. The reason he was coming up against these philosophers is because the Josephus was an Israelite. And he was he was coming against these philosophers because these philosophers were joining together to try to make the name of Israel extinct. They were upholding their own society's history and trying to demean or belittle the history of our people. So Josephus had to make a stand against these philosophers, letting them know, listen, you can promote your history without demeaning.